here those are the state's incomes and large households. What the House government does not do, it doesn't provide funding to build these units. It does not require the city or the county to build these units. And it doesn't approve specific developments or projects. It just lays the foundation for all of that. Yeah. Doi. Okay, Sorry. yeah, no. So this housing element, since we're doing it regionally, we will have some regional sections that will be the same throughout all the jurisdictions. And that includes some of the county background information, what's going on in grander economic terms, the countywide assessment of fair housing, so looking at where the opportunities, where are folks located, and then countywide housing policies and goals, and then summary of sites, which shows exact parcels of land where housing could potentially be built. And then shockingly, the next part, the local section looks a lot like that. However, local section has more focus on the community's voice, more focus on some input from the uh, planning staff. And then um, you're gonna get into your more local sites inventory, your local analysis of resources. So all those same sections that were in that regional section, you also have them here. It's just more specific for Kingsburg or Kerman, for example, another jurisdiction. And then also in this element, you're going to evaluate how well um, Kingsburg has responded to previous housing elements, just an analysis of that. So timeline, I said December 2023 looked really far away. So right now we're in that lovely outreach phase up there at the beginning. Beginning in January, we're gonna start drafting that the housing element. So the consultants are gonna go back and say, oh, we got all this data, what do we do with it? We're aiming for a public draft of this by February um, and give the public 30 to 40 days to give those comments back on it. And then guess what? We do more outreach after that. And then after that second round of outreach with that first round of edits, we're gonna submit it to HCD by the summer and then keep going through that process till we get that lovely HCD approval letter. And then adoption hearing should start in December, 2023. So. The second half of 2022, we're focusing on getting this started, the outreach, start doing initial data analysis, and then next year, we'll move into writing the document and then getting it approved. So it is a lot, but there are very brilliant consultants to work all of us through this. So I'm gonna call Kate up here to start talking about what is this whole RENA thing we keep talking about? Because I've heard it, but what does it mean? Thank you. You're so welcome. Clancy's a tough act to follow. All right, let's see. I'm gonna make sure I can be heard by our friends on Facebook Live. Okay. So the RENA, um, stand, so the Regional Housing Needs Allocation is what we call RENA for short. And it starts at the state. The state takes, um, based on projections of population for the state, they um, project the future housing need for each income category. And then they allocate the required number of units to the um, regional bodies of uh, governments known as COGS or councils of government. Um, and then on that regional level, at the COG level, they then um, develop a methodology to distribute the units um, to each jurisdiction uh, via a methodology that's approved by the State Housing and Community Development Department, or State HCD. And again, that's generally based on population estimates. Um, Fresno COG during this RENA cycle was responsible for distributing 58,298 units. Um, from there, it be becomes the city's role to determine how they're going to accommodate enough land at the appropriate densities to build housing for all economic segments of the population. Next slide, please. Thanks, Glancy. Sorry, we booby-trapped you with multiple PowerPoint slides this evening. So we've got a snapshot here of the Fresno-Cog um, Regional RENA here. 
And you can see we have highlighted or bolded the Kingsburg numbers. Kingsburg is responsible for a RENA allocation of 882 units. That's about 2% of the overall RENA allocation. And as you can see in the pie chart, um, the city of Fresno, city of Clovis, and unincorporated Fresno County are responsible for the lion's share of the region's RENA. So next, um, we want to talk a little bit about some of the housing element background data. So this is the background data that Clancy was saying the consultants are hard at work pulling together. Um, and this data helps us illustrate the existing housing needs in Kingsburg and Fresno County. So first, we'll start with income categories. State HCD defines affordability level using the area median income. The area median income for Fresno County is 80,300. Um, that's for a family of four. And as you can see in the table, we have a breakdown of income levels and persons per household, but really for um, area median income purposes, we tend to focus on a family of four and using that as our kind of metric for affordability for households. Next slide, please. So what is considered low income? Using HCD, again, 2020 area median income for household of four, we're looking at 80,300 for Fresno County. So um, a household that is considered low income is a household of four that's earning less than 80% of that median income. In this case, it's 62,300. Approximately 43 households in Fresno County, countywide, fall within the lower income category. And then we break up the low income category further into very low and extremely low. Um, so those at the very low income level are making 50% of AMI, and those at extremely low are making even less at 30% of AMI. Um, and we have a handy table here that talks about the typical occupations that you can see these kinds of households falling into, right? Anywhere from a school social worker to a personal care aide. Um, and then at the extremely low income, we tend to see people that are maybe part-time employees or are on a fixed income, like with social security. So with all that information on income and affordability, how affordable is Fresno County? We've got a lot of information on this slide, um, but I just want to call your attention again to Kingsburg, which is bolded. Um, between May 2021 and May 2022, the um, median price of a home increased by about 38.8%. So that's a pretty big increase, especially when you look at the other percent changes um, throughout Fresno County. And you can see some kind of comparable percentages in the unincorporated area of Fresno County. Next slide, please. Thank you. So who is most affected by high prices? So those, those would be people that um, are experiencing a housing cost burden. And those are folks that are overpaying on their housing prices, either overpaying on their mortgage or overpaying on their rent. And we consider overpaying to be somebody who's spending more than 30% of their income on their household expenses. Somebody who is severely overpaying is somebody who's paying more than 50% for housing. So we have, again, a bar chart here and we have circled Kingsburg in green here. Um, and you can see it kind of falls towards the lesser end when you compare it to other jurisdictions in Fresno County. We have 26% of folks that are overpaying for housing and 14% that are severely overpaying for housing. Again, that 50% of their income is going towards their housing expenses. Okay, so we are at the discussion section of this evening, which is really the highlight. We came here to hear from folks from the community, um, but I do wanna pause here before we enter into discussion and ask if there's any questions from the folks who are attending, um, anything that we went through tonight about housing elements or RENA or the background data that you have any questions about. 
And I just like to pause just to make sure that everyone feels comfortable. We can also um, continue to do Q&A as we move on to the discussion piece too. So we have a couple of discussion questions listed on the slides here. We also have some discussion questions written out on paper in the back of the room where the sign-in sheet was. So if anybody's interested in giving written feedback instead of verbal, that's definitely an option for you this evening. But we would like this to be a little bit um, more interactive than that. So we encourage you to speak up and address these questions with us. Um, I'll read through them up, fr up front here, and then we can go through them one by one. So what are the community's greatest assets? What do you think are the most critical housing needs in the community? And what groups in the community have the greatest housing needs? Do you have suggestions for addressing housing issues in the community? And do you have any suggestions for getting more community involvement in the housing element update process? So starting with question one, any thoughts on what are the community's greatest assets? Yeah, we can do that. Does that alienate our Facebook Live audience? They can, listen. they can listen in. Can they hear us if we sit over there, though? Okay, yeah. So maybe, I, yeah, I can just reiterate comments in the microphone if that's okay with everybody. I can start off just as an outsider, actually. I'm not a member of the community, a full-time member. There we go. Um, I'm Holly Owen. I'm the Community Development Director for the city, and I would like to speak broadly about what I consider to be the, some, of the, some of the community's greatest assets. I do not live here full time, but I serve the community. And uh, I will say that uh, when I think of Kingsburg and what their assets are, it, uh, it is, uh, is, some of these points are the following. I think it has a great brand. Uh, it's 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 very strong. It's very recognizable. People know when in the valley anyway. When you say Kingsburg, uh, usually what that means. Um, there's a sense of history here, and respect for that. Uh, there's a willingness to um, uh, engage in uh, thoughtful conversation, both from the dais and. Um, within community members, I, I would say for the most part, that's that's uh, the case. Um, it's very family friendly, uh, and many people uh, value uh, the schools here, uh, the sports, uh, the, and the, the larger community activities. So um, that's and also it's a great downtown, and that's uh, been good good investment uh, decisions, and some good planning over time, and just. Also, just little sheer luck, um, uh, responsible property owners, uh, and that would be uh, at least the short list for me. Thank you. We're welcome to take them out of turn, too. Sometimes, you know, it's easier to think about the challenges, right, or the needs. So what do we think are the most critical housing needs in the community? Thank you. So we heard affordability. From a developer's perspective, what are what is your thoughts on the most critical housing issues? And from where the construction travels. But I think you've got a community that's trying to figure out where how to balance affordability. 
Yeah, so we heard plus one to affordability, especially in the Valley, and we heard um, balancing the need for affordability with other assets of the Kingsburg community. Just curious, are, are folks here renters or owners? We've got a renter. Oh, okay. move us along to what groups in the community have the greatest housing needs we've heard this is a really a community with a lot of families a lot of kids maybe larger households because there are you know kids that we're trying to uh, make sure there's enough room for them um, larger families tend to need three or more bedrooms in their housing are there any groups that um, come to mind when we think about Kingsburg? Yeah. Any suggestions for addressing housing issues, like issues of affordability in Kingsburg? How do we get more community involvement, folks to come to meetings like these, show up at study sessions with the city council and um, planning commission? Any ideas for getting more community engagement in and the housing? Eat our area? food. <laughs> yes. Eat our food. Uh, no, I, I will say I will say that and, you know what it was useful for us to do the outreach that that we had uh, and it was a, the time was a little bit limited. I think if there's general educational pieces that can be provided by the consultants that we can um, put on our Facebook page or, you know, put uh, yeah, if there's a website that will be ready, that would be great, or just something that we can cut and paste um, as we go through the process, because at the very end we come to um, uh, public hearings, yeah. and sometimes people are like, oh, I didn't know anything about this, and you know, there's these rezones perhaps yes perhaps no um, and so that's where sometimes the stronger feelings may come out and uh, I think giving people a heads up on how why we do this yeah and uh, you know how how everybody is welcome to share thoughts and that there's and that there's a mandate that we can't necessarily say you know I don't think we don't want to do we don't want to do this Right, I'm not in the mood this year. Let's try it. Try this in a few years. That doesn't that doesn't work. So I'm going to reiterate your question into the microphone for those of us listening online. Um, so uh, Mike has indicated he hears affordability, affordability, affordability. Um, are there any solutions or ways to uh, make more affordable housing in the community? What's any any ideas? There really is no silver bullet. I mean, I, there always seems to be a lack of funding available to build affordable housing units. Um, so I think, I think when jurisdictions are able to 
get a little bit creative about pulling in funding sources, like creating things like housing trust funds, um, where they actually have their own like pot of money in order to construct. Sometimes that's beneficial. Um, but yeah, it's it's a it's a tough challenge. There is no silver bullet. And the state has been emphasizing streamlining a lot lately, right? So, like, you'll hear a lot about streamlining when you think about state housing law. So, ways to shorten the planning process, reduce the amount of hearings required for housing or affordable housing, and um, things that are meant to make it easier for builders to build. So, that's been kind of the um, a lot of the crux of what the state has been doing as well. Yeah, Mike brought up a good point, which is density. I don't know that our slides covered this, but I believe that the density for Kingsburg that uh, is 20 units per acre for affordable, right. So we do need, when we're talking about addressing the arena and building enough units that are at that density, we're looking at 20 units per acre and making sure we have enough zoned um, acres throughout the city uh, at that 20 units per acre with the hope that we can get some affordable units built there. But again, it's not the city's responsibility to build those units. They're not given money from the state to build those units. It's really about how to get some affordable housing developers out here to build those units and access uh, state grant funding programs and uh, federal grant funding programs. Yeah, I feel like I need to reiterate what you just said on the microphone. Do you, <laughs> we talked a little bit about missing middle and um, trying to, um, how that can also be a potential way to build incremental additional housing options. I do want to say, I want to ask if there's, I know we had kind of set questions, but we can go a little off book here if there's any like other questions that you have or anything else that we wanted to discuss within the realm of the housing element tonight, just that door is open to the folks here with us. Yeah. 
does this does the city want to add anything anything that based on what we just talked about well this will all be an edu educational process I think for everybody I know that the uh, American Planning Association the, the the California meeting is coming up in Octo October I'm sure there will be many many sessions on housing there always are uh, and increasingly that's you know we, we are asked to do some pretty complex analyses uh, it's pretty rare for any city to be able to do it without consultants at this point it has just become um, a full-time task if you were to do that and you would you would not be serving your your community so with that said I mean what we're, we're grateful for the the structure that you're going to give us it's a, it's up to us to fill in the the, the blanks and and uh, do our our best to reach out and to answer the questions as they as they come up I have to admit I you know I'm at the very beginning I'm at the top of the slide here and I know it's gonna you know it's gonna be a, a bit of a yeah. bit of a dive I know there'll be some ordinance amendments that will undoubtedly be required I don't even know the nature of those yet or how they will look but we're, we're hoping that that kind of help is given um, by the consulting staff to the individual cities so we're all on the same page we all make sure that we have what what is uh, legally required in our ordinances as we did the last with the last housing element uh, and, um, and so I'm expecting that I'm also expecting a good sites inventory and I mentioned that uh, last week too so something that's graphically rich that people can understand they can look up a property and say oh it's zoned this yeah. and it's this units per acre and it's this APN so when people are looking around that makes it very easy for them even from the outs an outsider's point of view yeah. to know what's available yeah so. yeah oh awesome thank you any final thoughts from the folks here all right well I think we can wrap um, there I uh, really appreciate the engagement tonight it was a small but mighty crew Thank you for being here, and thank you to those of us who joined on Facebook Live this evening. Um, it was a pleasure, and we will be um, having future uh, engagement opportunities, like Clancy mentioned earlier in the presentation. So we'll be in touch with more information on those opportunities in the future. Thanks, all.